I started and ran a print farm business out of my house that grew to about 25 3D printers. 16 months later, we're now in a commercial space with almost 70. I'm gonna give you a sneak peek behind the scenes and show you my operation. Plus share some things I put in place that really helped me scale to where I'm at. Let's go. When I was running my print farm business out of our house, it seemed like we had printers shoved everywhere. I had two full racks in the unfinished part of our basement and several others kind of scattered around the house. It's safe to say we were bursting at the seams and I knew I needed to move it out of my house if I ever wanted to expand it. We found this commercial property available pretty close to our house and started transitioning over here in January of 2023. The starting point wasn't too bad, but it definitely needed a little work. Funny enough, the last tenants were actually a small startup 3D printing company using industrial metal 3D printers. Because of that, the space had tons of power available and even rooms already set up for printers. All right, so a little bit about my 3D printing business. We design and manufacture aftermarket dust collection attachments, most commonly for miter saws. And we do this across a bunch of different models and brands, serving mostly DIYers and some contractors. So this whole facility that I'm gonna show you today is really to support the entire life cycle of these products, all the way from conception through manufacturing. So what we have now is 2,500 square feet of manufacturing space and about 500 square feet of offices, which is broken up into five key areas. Storage, prototyping, part prep, fulfillment, and production, AKA the print farm. The first area we're gonna talk about is storage. Now it doesn't matter what type of manufacturing you do, you are gonna to have to store some level of materials and supplies. And as a 3D print farm, we're no different. This is the main bulk storage area we have. Now one of the beauties of 3D printing is that you typically don't have to carry as high of an inventory of the parts you're producing. So in our case, most of what we're carrying are the aftermarket parts that go along with the printed parts that we offer in our products. Now in this space, we've got everything from shipping supplies to hardware to branding inserts that we put inside the packages. These are all things that are consumed on a regular basis and we have to make sure we have enough inventory for. I always tell people one of the hardest parts of running a 3D printing business isn't actually the 3D printing. That's the easy part. The hard part is keeping up with everything else which is why I'm really excited to finally put in place a Kanban system for our inventory. Now, if you've never heard of this, pretty much every large scale manufacturer uses something like this. And this is called a Kanban card. And what this does is lets you know when you're at a minimum quantity and when to reorder. So in the case of these cards, there's a QR code. I'll scan the QR code and it will actually create an order within the system that I'm using. Now you can do this yourself or you can use a system like these Arta cards. I'll leave links down below if you wanna go check it out. But now all of our critical inventory that would keep an order from going out is controlled using this Kanban system, which essentially turns what used to be a manual process into an automated process, which is something that's really important if you ever wanna scale. So hopefully this keeps us from ever prematurely running out of materials we need to fulfill orders. Now the other main storage area is right next door in this room. And this room actually serves three purposes. We've got storage, there's also a small expansion of the print farm, as well as the 3D printer maintenance and repair station. The supplies stored in this location are mostly one kilogram spools, which are actually only used for these printers. All of the other machines in the main print farm area are using three kilogram spools, but we're also storing all of these spare parts we use to maintain and repair our 3D printer fleet. So currently we've got a mix of Prusa and Bamboo Labs. So we've got spare parts for both. And we've consolidated everything to this tool chest to kind of make it a one-stop shop. Eventually we're gonna implement the same Kanban system here as well. So we know when we're running low on something and when we need to reorder. There's still a massive opportunity to organize this stuff, but as you can see, we're already starting with a little bit of grid affinity. Now these six printers here are kind of the black sheep of my print farm. The three P1Ss all have 0.4 millimeter nozzles. I typically run 0.6 millimeter nozzles. And that's because we have certain products that actually require the smaller nozzle. And then the three Mark IVs are the only other kind. Every other Prusa I have is a Mark IIIs Plus. So for that reason, this part of the print farm is really dedicated to just specialty products and things that we don't print at such a high volume. It also serves as kind of a pilot plant to do short production runs for a new product to make sure all the print files are working correctly. All right, the next area is prototyping. This open space over here is where a bulk of the product development work actually happens. Because we design products for large power tools, we need a lot of room to spread out. And one of the most useful things we've done is created three stations with these mobile workbenches. This allows me to prototype up to three different products in parallel or use one of the workbenches to do something else around the shop. So on this back wall, we've got easy access to hand tools to aid in the prototyping and kind of reverse engineering process. And we've got a host of other supporting equipment as well. Now, another aspect of prototyping is having machines dedicated to printing the prototype parts themselves. We actually don't leverage any of our print farm machines to do prototyping. It's all done here in my office. Once a design is fully fleshed out, then we'll push it to the pilot farm and test out the final print files before moving to production. Now, I know if you're just getting started, you may not have the luxury of having dedicated machines for this, but the quicker you can get here means the faster your development cycle is and the more products you can push out to sell. And one of kind of the unique challenges that we have is storing all of these giant saws. So I've got racks along the back wall that hold the majority 
majority of them, but as you can see, we're pretty much out of space. So I gotta figure out where we're gonna put the rest. All right, immediately opposite the prototyping area is the part prep area. This is the intermediate step where freshly printed parts are brought and prepped before they're moved to the fulfillment area. This is where my employees spend a lot of their time, and as a result is where a lot of the added labor cost actually comes from in the product price. So all of the freshly printed parts are stored in these bins on the bottom shelf, and then as they're prepped, they move up top where they're cleaned up, and then we add any hardware if necessary. And all that hardware is stored here in these bins, which makes it easy to see and get to. And again, we're using the Kanban cards to let us know when we're inventory is low and when we need to reorder. Another important part preparation area for us is this workstation, which we use to cut the rubber flaps, which is an integral part of what we sell. This used to be a task that we did in the fulfillment area, but we found that it just kind of slowed up the whole process. So we built a dedicated spot to do it. Now two people can be working at the same time, one fulfilling orders, the other creating flat bags and keeping kind of the whole process going. So everything needed to work in the station is stored on this shelf here, which again, we're starting to implement the Kanban system. And it's turned out to be a really worthwhile investment in time to set this up. Now, once the parts are fully prepped and assembled, we move them to the opposite side of the rack to fulfillment. So all these bins here contain parts that have been cleaned, prepped, and are ready to go out in an order. We then build an order by combining those parts with any kind of packaging or ancillary parts like these flat bags that we talked about earlier, and we pre-box them into common configurations. This is something we started doing just a couple of months ago, and it has made such a huge impact on our business. Before we did this, we basically ran just-in-time manufacturing, which means we printed it, we boxed it, we shipped it. Because of that, our lead times were a little bit longer than I wanted them to, and we had a really tough time dealing with surges when a certain product started selling a lot more than normal. So by moving all of our most common products to a pre-boxed configuration, we now pull from here and are not building orders to ship them. So if anything, this kind of acts as a buffer for demand and allows us to keep up with orders where our lead time is now one to two days. So after we print the packing slips, the shipping labels, get everything boxed up, it's moved all the way down the table here where they're sealed up with the tape machine, which is the true MVP of the shop. Seriously, if you don't have a tape machine, what are you waiting for? Then the boxes are placed in bags and placed by the front door for our carrier to pick up. This efficient workflow of getting orders out the door every day is a lot easier thanks to Shopify, which is by far the easiest way to start an online business. And also supports in-person business too. But if you're thinking about selling anything online, Shopify is the GOAT. What if I told you it's even easier now? They just released some AI tools that help anyone make a clean, efficient e-commerce business. Are you an expert in writing sales copy? Didn't think so, me either. You can use this feature to help you write product descriptions for you that not only sound better, but are also optimized for SEO. It even lets you change the tone of how it's written to match your style. But this image background enhancement feature is what I'm really curious about. So let's try it out. So all you do is upload a product image and wow. So it's already separated the background from the product. I can either remove the background altogether or replace it with a solid color like white. But this option lets you use AI to create a whole new background based on prompts. Let's get crazy and say uh, in the sand. Holy crap, that is a miter saw on the beach. I'm gonna play around with this some more, but you can see that these tools are pretty powerful and when used properly can make a real impact on the look, feel, and hopefully conversion of your online store. Start selling today with a free trial by heading to shopify.com slash printfarmacademy, or you can scan the handy QR code or just use the link down in the video description. You definitely need to give this a shot. All right, that brings us to the crown jewel and probably the reason why you wanted to watch this video, the print farm. These two racks represent the latest expansion of my print farm, which is 12 brand new Bamboo Lab P1Ss, which comes out to around a 40% increase in production capacity, even though the total printer count only increased by 25%. Now, on top of the fact that the P1Ss just look really nice, there's a really calculated reason why I chose these over something else. I've effectively been running a reliability study on these for about eight months now. And when you factor in things like output and failure rate, not even bringing cost into the equation, the Bamboo Lab P1S to me at least stands out as a print farm workhorse. So I'm gonna put my money where my mouth is and see what happens. And I've got a video coming out very soon where I talk about what I do to get these ready for production, as well as some of the other stuff you see, including these custom spool holders. Now behind these double doors is where the majority of the farm actually is. Now in this main print room, I've got 40 3D printers. I've got 28 Prusa Mark III S Pluses and 12 Bamboo Lab P1Ps. And as you can probably tell, nothing's running right now because it would be too loud. Plus it gets really hot with all of them running at one time. When we first moved in this building, I spent a ton of time getting this room ready, which included running a ton of power in here. Now, luckily there was already some power in here that we could repurpose, but I needed even more. In total, we've got 11 20 amp circuits to run this many printers, which to be honest is more than we need for this configuration. When I first moved in, I thought we'd have three rows of printers around the entire perimeter, but it turns out I like two a lot better. When I started building out my print farm back in 2020, 
I used the Prusa Mark III S Plus platform because at the time it was the most reliable print farm workhorse choice. And they've been great. A lot of these are several years old and are still going strong. But when new technology hits the market as a business owner, it's my responsibility to take a good look at it. And so far these Bamboo Lab P1Ps have proven themselves in reliability, output, and most definitely speed. And based on thousands of hours of print time, I found that one Bamboo Lab machine can replace two Prusa machines. So a couple things to highlight. We've got every single machine isolated on its own panel within a shelf. And underneath of each panel is a strip of foam to dampen it against the shelf frame itself. I found this is more than adequate for preventing any issues with resonance or anything with running multiple printers on the same shelf. I've also got every single printer running through a UPS or an uninterruptible power supply. This has a bunch of benefits that I'm actually gonna talk about in an upcoming video, so go check that out. The other is filament. I mentioned we run three kilogram spools in the majority of the print farm, and that's meant we've had to come up with some ideas on how to route the filament from these custom spool holders to the printers themselves. And I'm pretty sure I can make it even better, but that just means I have to do it 40 times. And then finally, we have the filament storage itself. One of the biggest challenges of running a print farm business is keeping up with the filament, making sure we have enough on hand of all the different colors and types. Now, one thing I've tried to do is consolidate as much as I can and standardize. So we have standardized on protopasta for the majority of what we print. I did buy a bunch of black PETG in bulk from a company who was looking to get rid of it at a pretty cheap price. So I actually bought a total of three pallets worth of black PETG, something like 1,500 total pounds of it, which are some of the black boxes you might see around the facility. But I cannot stress enough the power of standardization and not using cheap filament. After having worked at a 3D printing company that also manufactured their own filament, I know how important it is to print quality. So if you just want to eliminate a ton of variables, use good filament. And that is basically my print farm business in a nutshell. Was there anything I missed or maybe you want more information on? Leave those down in the comments. I'll try to answer as best I can. And if you're interested in starting or growing a 3D printing business, consider joining the Print Farm Academy course launching later this year. Happy printing.